and welcome back to Geneva Watch Days. Today we are out on the lake. Look at this, how beautiful it is. Luckily the weather is looking better today, so we're very happy about that. Um, we have a fantastic program for you today with lots of watchmaking entertainment. Uh, the program starts with Stefan Vessa, CEO of Moise Lacroix, who we're going to be visiting at the East West Hotel. Brice Le Chevalier is at Armin Strom, also on a boat. It was the same lounge boat that we had last year, so he's going to be there with his fishbowl. And Suzanne has a double job today, so she's off to MBNF for a first date, and then over to Erberg, where she's going to be looking at some novelties, and that's some really interesting things there. I was there yesterday. And we're going to finish the day with Jean-Christophe, who again is on the streets of Geneva, entertaining everyone, this time with a tree lobe timepiece. So let's go and visit our guest of the day, Maurice Lacroix's Stéphane Vasseur. So hello, Stéphane. Hi, Sophie. How are you doing? <laughs> Great. It's lovely to be here at the East West Hotel in your tropical I don't know, what would you call it? Winter garden or summer garden? Summer garden. I mean, at the moment, it's a summer garden That's with the true. weather. Yes, absolutely. But it's an incredible place, right? Yeah, yeah, definitely. This, I love it. I love in the middle of Geneva, plant. in the middle of the fair. We have a waterfall behind us. I love it. <laughs> I feel like I'm on holiday. Yes. So tell me, how's the first day been? We're at the end of day one. How's well, it's, it been? it's not really the first day because this evening is the opening, but we've been very busy. Yeah. So we've taken advantage of already being here to meet all our partners. And we have some nice little watches to show. Okay. And so people have been very, very enthusiastic at what they've seen. Oh, brilliant. Now I see we have one here. Yeah. Your icon skeleton urban tribe. Yes, the one and only. Tell me, tell us about yeah. this. So, I mean, it's, it's um, as you, you've just mentioned, it's the urban tribe on the skeleton. So the skeleton is a 39 millimeter. <laughs> and you've seen actually what's special about this urban tribe is this um, engraving we have, which is a, a very, um, aesthetic architectural design pattern and um, this year on skeleton which means that we even skeletonized the rotor on oh, the wall. Wow. That's beautiful because you already had an urban tribe piece in, in the past right? Yeah it was a 42 millimeter also limited 500 pieces and that was kind of the feedback we had from the people saying yeah you know it's for some people it was a bit big yeah so bringing it on the 39 it's it's more of a common choice. Okay, it's really something. I love it. This is going to fly out the windows. Next up, Brice is on the lounge boat at Marty Marine with Armin Strom. Claude, thank you for welcoming us on your floating boots of the Geneva Watch Days. You're the co-founder and master watchmaker of Armin Strom. And I'm going to ask you to pick up three pieces of paper, please. If you can read the question and then answer it okay. quickly, okay. spontaneously. Give us a online teaser for your next big project in small size uh, resonance nice. pick up another color please if you could travel in time where would you go well my favorite place is i'm a back uh, country outdoor guy so it would be alaska mm -hmm. cool one <laughs> and to finish with who are you most looking forward to meet at geneva watches days our stuff they have worked so hard for the new watch. Um, I'm really looking forward to welcome them on our boat. Okay, cool. This is what also we are going to do now. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Let's see the watches. Over to Suzanne now, who's at MBNF on a first date. Hi, Mojde. Thank you so much for joining us and uh, being our guest of the day on our first date segment. And now, just to let you know, this is a brand that you're already kind of familiar with. I know that you appreciate very much the brand MBNF, but and you're probably kind of familiar with some of their pieces already, but I hope that I can surprise you with this first date watch. So, so just to let you know, this is the Horological Machine 9 that we know as the HM9 SV Sapphire Vision. So that already kind of tells you a little bit about it. And But it's come in new clothes this year. So big reveal. Ready? Woo! Wow. Now, I know that you're from the contemporary art world, so I'm really interested to hear your take on it. Let's hear your first impressions. Beautiful. So first impressions are that this piece reminds me of the ready-made art movement uh, and also some of the more uh, pop art 
uh, artists like Jeff Koons, who creates these soft, really shiny, uh, me like metallic pieces that are s slightly eerie, mm -hmm. uh, but really attractive. Yeah. So Other, otherworldly, you might say. Yes, otherworldly for sure. Um, and it really just reminds me of an artwork that would come from a, a designer. Um, you would definitely see this. You could definitely see this at a really high-end art gallery or a museum. So definitely atypical for the watch world, um, but not atypical for MBNF. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, that's my first impression. Really, really yeah. incredible. It's, it's weird that you say this probably is a piece that came up from a, a designer because actually the, the designer behind this particular model, you know him very well, Eric Giroud. Ah, now Just we're talking. Party. Yeah, now we're talking. Eric Gio is a, is a good friend who's helped me out in many ways before, and it completely makes sense that he's designed this. I really, really appreciate how soft the curves and the yeah, the curves are extremely soft. It's very, very well polished. It's not there's no hard edges, which makes it really approachable, exactly. even though it's kind of big and bigger than what you would usually wear on your wrist. Exactly. And if we turn it a little under the light, you can see that the coated movement wow. goes a bit from green to blue, so it changes. You it's know? like a chameleon. Kind of. Beautiful. So I know that you personally, that you tend to wear more of the vintage uh, style of watches, a bit smaller in diameter, uh, maybe better. Could you see this? as your plus one, maybe one of these days? Definitely. I do generally tend to wear smaller watches that are vintage, more subtle. I have a small wrist, so it's harder for me, I think, to pull off something this big. But something that makes it feel really approachable is that it is so playful, and it really reminds me of toys that you may play uh, with in your childhood. And I think that's very um, in line with MBNF's typical designs in the sense that there's such joy and creativity and uh, they really have their own universe that they've created in their own language. So mm -hmm. although it's a bit, you know, atypical, it doesn't come off as pretentious or unapproachable mm -hmm. because of this play playful the way it kind of taps into. Yeah, it taps into something really childish in a really special, free way. Yeah, and I guess like people out there who really like, kind of are familiar with MBNF will recognize that philosophy that Definitely. it always tries to appeal to the childlike interior. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, last question, and this is kind of the question of today: Would there be a second date with this watch? I'm definitely intrigued. Uh, and I'm definitely interested in getting to know it better because it's so intricate and because it is so open in the design, there's just so much to look at and I think it would take more than just one date to get to know it better. Maybe we can get a little cozier uh, on a second date and really look at each other's crevices. Yes. <laughs> or oh, even a third date. <laughs> Yeah, on even, yeah. even a third date. Not before the third date. Not before the third date. Third date. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, this baby has got to go home, but you know who to call if you want to take her out. <laughs> you. <laughs> Thank Thanks you. so much, Mush. Thank you, Suzanne. And now back to Suzanne, who continues her adventures at Irvok. Thank you so much for joining us today and appearing as our special guest talking about what's new at Geneva Watch Days. Now, I think we all can guess maybe, that Uwerk is going on a bit of a stellar exploration kind of journey this year at Geneva Watch Days. And uh, one of those components of this journey is sitting right in front of us, something that people might not really expect from Uwerk, but this is a very special piece. Why is it special? Thank you. Thank you, Susan, having me on your show. It's a big pleasure, and it's a big pleasure to present you the Space Time Blade. The Space Time Blade actually came out of a crazy vision together with Dalibor Farni, mm -hmm. which is a Czech uh, a creator, uh, artisan, manufacturer, which is able today and again today to create these Nixie tubes yes. in an extreme nice and even better quality as they were done mm -hmm. in the 40s and 50s. Exactly, because they're almost impossible to find now, the original. Yes, exactly. There are some old new stock from Russia and the mm -hmm. US, actually, over productions from the time, because at the time, actually, the Nixie tubes went overrun by LEDs. Yes. 
mm -hmm. space time. Yeah. I understand that this piece is going to support a very, very special cause. That's something that I think all of us in the watch industry care so much about. Can you tell us a bit more about that? Yeah, absolutely. So, so, so we've pleasured the very first piece we, out of the collaboration with Dali Balfani. We are, it's kind of the first piece, a prototype also, but mm -hmm. it's a real functioning, for sure, finished uh, uh, clock. Mm -hmm. This actual piece? This actual piece here. Um, we are delighted to offer this to only watch because it somehow fights, you know, time, space, mm -hmm. but it can also help the charity of, of the medical reasons of, of this charity of, of only watch. Mm -hmm. So I think it's a, it's a best, uh, perfect fit for Uwerks 23 giveaway for, for, for this charity. It's really a, a, the best support we can mm -hmm. give to fight, you know, this. Uh, this, this tragedy of, of, of this health uh, yeah, reality exactly. for this charity. Now, I noticed that you have a very special sort of implement or a tool in front of us. I'm guessing it has something to do with the space-time block. Would you be so, mm -hmm. And it's heavy. Uh, I tried to pick it up just now. It's, quick. it's yes, pretty heavy. Uh, absolutely, absolutely. And it, it gives you the heaviness and the profoundness of, of what we are talking here because we are talking about local time. Mm -hmm. Local time uh, measured in seconds. Yes. Local time measured in tenths and one hundredths of seconds. So very reactive, very precise exactly. on the, see all the And here, yeah, that, that's lightening up all the eight Nixie tubes here. Mm -hmm. And here we have uh, an indication which actually shows us what we traveled since the beginning of the day mm -hmm. around the Earth. So at the Earth's equator, we traveled 27,421 mm -hmm. kilometers. Today. Only today. While sitting here, Susan. So that's kind of, uh, uh, you know, you can, uh, <laughs> while even while speaking, you are traveling like crazy. Yeah. So fasten your seatbelts. And exactly. on top, you have the next indication which goes actually around the sun. And this is since the beginning of this day, mm -hmm. we traveled 1,800,000 and some kilometers around the sun. Mm -hmm. So that gives you even more uh, an incredible impression of, of space and Does time. Does it reset every day? When, or yeah, it when starts you... at zero every, every day. Every morning, every zero, 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 uh -huh. you know, at midnight, let's say. And then the first number is just the changing kilometers. Then you mm -hmm. have the tenth, mm -hmm. the one hundred. So you see and you get, you get that feel of how, how fast we are traveling now. Well, thank you so much for explaining this otherwise mind-boggling and honestly quite uh, intimidating piece to us. I think you've broken it down very beautifully. Thank you so much once again, Felix, Thank for your you. time here. And uh, yeah, I hope you have a good rest of the day and a rest of the week. Big pleasure, Susan, as always. Thank you. And to conclude, we have Jean-Christophe, who's out on the streets of Geneva with a very interesting tree love. Je ne suis pas le prisonnier, je suis l'heureux gagnant de cette montre trilobe. Quelle heure est-il La réponse, tout bientôt. Bonne question. 10h, euh, non, 8h, 8h30 euh, Moi, je dirais... Ah, c'est une complication, ça. Waouh Et il y a l'heure de marquer là-dessus. Et il y a l'heure de marquer là-dessus. Salut Raphaël, j'ai une question pour toi. Salut. Faut pas bouger. Ouais. Ah, Raphaël, j'ai une question. Ouais. De quelle heure a cette montre trilobe Alors, euh... Dans... <rire> Jala, mon Ne dis pas de bêtises. Euh, il est. Euh, bah moi je dirais qu'il est euh, 8h30. 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 Non. C'est pas forcément une bonne réponse, mais. Alors là, il y a 16h20. 6h20, oui. Ah ouais, 6h20. Comme ça. Exactement. Ah ça, oui, merde, j'avais pas vu. Non, faut pas dire. C'est ouais. une façon différente de lire l'heure. C'est une maison qui s'appelle euh, Trilobe. Ah là, carrément. Ouais. Hein Ouais, mais après, une fois qu'on a pris l'habitude, les gens de Trilob me disaient, ça devient une seconde, une seconde nature. Ah, les gens adorent participer. Hein. So that's it for us for today. We hope you enjoyed the show. We'll be back tomorrow for more fun and games. Until then, have a lovely evening.